we're able to update the store whenever the user submits the form, let's select that name out of the store and display it to the view. And we'll use a NGRX selector for that. If we go back to the browser, go to module three and video 12 and click on documentation. And this is the documentation on selectors. And what we'll be setting up in this video is something similar to this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a slice out of our store, a feature. And then when we grab that slice, we'll be able to perform different things with it. In our case, we're gonna select the name out of that, that feature. And that's what we'll set up in this video. Like we did with our action and our reducer file, let's generate that using NGRX schematics from the command line. Go down to schematics, click on selector, and copy this. And the only flag we'll be using in this case is skip test. Inside the terminal, paste, and we'll describe where do we want to put our new selector, and I'll put it inside the store, inside of a new folder called selectors, and then I'll call it customer support, the same we called our action file. And don't forget to add the flag skip test. And that'd be equal to true. Here's our brand new file. Let's check that out. If we go into our store now, there should be a new folder called selectors. And here is our brand new file. And then it automatically pulls in a few methods that we're gonna need, like the create feature selector and the create selector. So the create selector is how, how we're gonna actually create the selector. That's self-explanatory. And then the create feature selector, this is how we're gonna actually grab the feature or the slice out of our store. If we actually go back to the browser and go to our form, the feature that we're gonna be selecting is the customer support feature. We only have one right now. So we're, we're gonna grab that slice by using that method. And then we'll use the create selector to go in and grab the name and we'll set that up. And let's set up our create feature selector first and let's add our block of code. And now we have a variable called select customer support feature. We're using the create feature selector that we're passing in. We needed to set up our type. Uh, let's bring that in from our customer support reducer file. And then also we'll bring in our key from the same file. And that key, by the way, is, if we go in our reducer file, is this right here. All it is is a string. Technically, you could just have a string here. You could pass in a string. If we copy this, jump back in here, it could be like that if you wanted to. But since we got the variable, let's use it. And then the state is our interface, if we go back here. So this is what we're dealing with. And that's pretty much it. Now we have our feature. Now we need to set up our selector. Let's add that block of code right here. And then now we're selecting the name out of our feature. So we use the create selector. We're passing in a parameter, the feature we just created, that is this. And keep in mind, you can stack these features. Let's say you have a whole bunch of these different features selecting different slices out of the store. Well, you can stack all of them right here and then pass them all into the function here. Now the last parameter is just a basic function. I used to think when I first started doing this, I used to think there was something more to this. There isn't. It's just a plain function. Every, all your features that you're passing in up here, you want to pass into your function. So right now we're only passing in one feature, one state. And then all we're doing is just returning the name from that state. That's it. So whenever we call this select name, we will get back a observable of name. Now that we created our selector, let's actually use it. So let's save this. And also keep in mind, if you want a copy of this snippet here, you can just go back to the home page, go to video 12 and click on snippets. You'll find a copy of all the code that I'm creating in this video. You'll find a copy there. So you could just copy and paste everything. So let's actually use our new selector. Where we can use our new selector is inside the pages, the customer support and the TS file. And that is this file right here, this form. So when the user submits the form, we'll show their name right below here, thanking them for filling out the form. If we go back to here, so the first thing we'll do is we'll create a variable. And this is going to hold them a observable, so I'll add the dollar sign there. And it's going to be a string. And then we'll set this variable by calling our store and using our selector. So we're already pulling in the store. We set this up in a prior video. Just make sure you're doing that. 
Then from within the ng on in it, we'll set that name variable. And that's going to be equal to this dot store. And now we'll use the pipe. Now in here, ngrx gives us the select operator. So let's pull that in. And that is this. That's coming in from ngrx, by the way. If we go back up here, right here. So it's being brought in from ngrx store. And then here we could pass in the selector that we created, and, and it was called select name. Let's bring that in. And now we are selecting the name and we're setting it to here. And that's pretty much it for using a selector. Let's do one more thing. I'm going to copy this right here. This is temporary. We're going to be changing this in the next video. But so we can see that that success field, I'll just paste that right here and set it to true. And that's it for our TS file. Now let's change our HTML. If we open up our HTML, and now we need to display the name whenever the user submits the form. So right here is the message that we're giving the user when they they successfully submit the form. And right here is where I'll show their name. So I'll just add that right here and change this around, remove this. And that's perfect. So we're using the, the name observable and we're subscribing to it in line like this using the async. Let's test this out, make sure it's working. So save this and also save your TS file. And let's run this in the browser. And the browser will automatically refresh since I have the application running. So I'll enter in a new name, hit send. And here it is. So what we're doing now is we're selecting that name from the store using a NGRX selector. So this is just a real basic introductory to selectors. In the next modules, though, we're going to be getting more in depth with selectors. But for now, that's just a basic rundown. In the next video, let's set up our first effect, our first NGRX effect.